I'm truly happy about being reconnected with Dr. Connie, a psychoneurologist and intuitive coach. I met her in 2007 on a six-day um, life mastery program that put me on my path to mindfulness, wellness, and health. Dr. Connie has worked with people like Tony Robbins and Deepak Chopra. She has a doctorate in psychoneurology and is a master of numerous healing therapies. So stay tuned, hear her talk about some of these transformative methods, and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Enjoy. But it's just wonderful that there's tools and ways out there for healing because it's all about healing mm -hmm. and sometimes healing without you even know that you do. How sure. comfortable is that? You don't have to do anything. You just healed, right? That's in that specific moment. And that for me is fascinating to get people out of their fixed, closed system, beliefs, thoughts, things they do over and over again to open up to a new form of being more happy, present, aware, alive, fulfilled. I'm not saying that Akashic records are the answer for everybody. I'm not saying that a lot of the tools are for everybody. But there is something more out there and that something is resonating with a certain person. You just have to find it. There is Reiki, there is emotional trauma release. There is, there's so much out there, but there is, yeah. an experience. So when you have that open mind, when you let go of fixed beliefs, you're in for a surprise. There's a certain amount of people that are living in a small world and that might be the best for them at that moment but if you're not happy with living in your small world there's so much to explore on the outside it's been so long it's been i guess 16 years 14 years somewhere in there since yeah um since i met you it looks like you do just about everything, it seems like. You have, I, I have a list of things here. I'm going to read off some of the things that, that you do. Um, you're, you're an expert in neuroassociative uh, conditioning and neurolinguistic programming, also certified in core transformation, rational em emotive therapy, rapid in integrative gestalt, Amazonian herbology, um, Ophanum, I'm not familiar with that one. How is it pronounced? Um, Ophanum? Ophanim. Ophanim. Yes. Uh, a chai Kung, emotional freedom therapy, uh, total life therapy, art therapy, clinical uh, hypnotherapy, and you hold a degree in physical education. And I hold a degree in um, psychoneurology. That's my highest degree. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, so that is uh, so. Yeah, so you, you, it seems as if you 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 know a lot. <laughs> I know a lot, and it's not surprising that my number one value is growth, right? I, I mean, connection, love, and then right. growth. And so I love learning, mm -hmm. and the reason I love learning so much new things is that I can all bring it into my own mix, but also if I, with a client, with a certain challenge problem, there's never a lack of tools. I always know something right. in entry from everything I learned to, uh, to help that client. And at some level, when you do it long enough, and I've been doing that for a very long time, then you don't have to think. You don't have to pick and choose. It's all in here, and then it automatically right. comes out in a directed flow. So okay. I love ways of helping people. Well, so when I met you, you were actually um, leading or heading up a Tony Robbins program called Life Mastery. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the turning points of, of, you know, my growth. And it had everything to do with, you know, I remember in the airport, I ate a hamburger on the way there. Um, and, <laughs> and then, of course, <laughs> we got there. And I guess Sunday, I had a salad. Monday, we, I didn't eat anything. Tuesday, nothing. Wednesday, nothing. Thursday, I had a half a banana. Actually, I was there with my then wife. And, yeah. And it was, you know. So Thursday, we had half a banana. And then Friday, 
um, we were allowed to eat. And at that point, we really didn't feel the urge to. No, exactly. That's um, funny, but I tell right? you what, I, I had I bought a big meal on on Friday um, and it looked great and it smelled amazing. Um, and I had the smallest bite of every little corner of that plate. And it was some of the best food I've ever tasted. I mean, everything in my body was just cleaned out. My palates were cleaned out. Um, it made huge changes. I had so much energy for about three months. Um, and that would have continued, except that was, that actually was New Year's. And then I had a lot of fun on New Year's and next morning I didn't feel so well. And um, anyway, but it was like three months. I, I mean, it was because of this, this cleanse that I took part in that made all the difference. And that, that really opened my eyes um, in the sense that, you know, what you put in your body, it really makes a difference. Um, and then, of course, there was a lot of educational programs or, or um, sessions put into place. Um, things like, uh, you know, muscle testing. Well, on, on Karma Hub, I actually have interviewed, um, um, oh, oh, what's his name, Mark? Oh, no. John, John McGuire. So yeah. John, John McGuire. Yeah. So he was fantastic. Yeah, he um, is fantastic. And... And then, you know, of course, you see other speakers um, like Deepak Chopra. And, and you've done some work with De Deepak Chopra as well. Is that right? Absolutely. Even before I went to Tony, I first went to Tony in 1996. And before that, because the Maharaja was in the Netherlands, he lived there. And oh. uh, Deepak came frequently to visit him. And then he gave some courses in the Netherlands. Okay. So I went there and uh, so that was, I don't know, it must have been 1992 or something like that when I first went there. Okay. And I was very attracted to it. It was very difficult for me to curb my patience because the way he was teaching back then, he gave all these great like, like speeches and it didn't make any sense. So hmm. only after four days, all the pieces of the puzzle made sense. And then you could understand what he really was talking about. But when he was talking and he has a very distinct style, right? He is like having that little Indian accent, which is very soothing. Then he speaks kind of on one tone and slowly. So the second challenge was the first was patience and the second challenge was staying awake. So, but I, once I got that mastered, both of them, it was just fabulous. It was amazing. I love the world of metaphysics and to have also an understanding and explanation of what is going on and not only put it under like woohoo, right? Or a new right. age or whatnot. So yes, that was a lovely experience. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you went with Tony Robbins, who is uh, not so monotone and a little <laughs> all over the place. So he kind of went from Lake. Yeah. One, yeah, one one extreme to another, I guess. Right? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And in that time he had during Life Mastery, which was a huge event, nine days long, mm -hmm. way too long. And um, he had Deepak Chopra life. So oh, that was okay. wonderful to see that combination. Right, right. Well, so there were a couple of things that we wanted to um, hit on today. Um, and remind me, I want to make sure I'm correct about this. I know we talked about um, being able to tap into your intuition. Is that right? Yeah. Um, did we talk about remote viewing a we bit? We talked about remote viewing as well. Okay. Because, I, you know, I, I would, I mean, I'm definitely fascinated by that. Yes. Um, Akashic records. I'm not sure we spoke too much about that, but I, I'm I'm pretty fascinated by you know would learn like to learn at least the concept. Yeah. About what that what that is. Um. And of course, you, you seem to be an expert in so many fields. So whatever you want to throw out, uh, please you know <laughs> just yeah just, uh, let me know. Yeah, I think I'm just an expert in whatever people come with to me <laughs> okay. or businesses. I have the ability to go to the core of the problem 
or the challenge, like Tony Robbins likes to say, right? He uses yes. the word challenge more, but sometimes it's, it's downright a problem. And um, I can directly go to the core of that. And then with a directed flow of everything I ever learned, I am able to really help them. And often it's... Um, it's stemming from all the stuff you carry in your subconscious mind. Right. So, and your subconscious mind doesn't have a judge. It, it, it's like action, reaction, reaction, immediately action, right, on it. So right. it's a lot of stuff from past experiences that has a direct impact on how you react. And that reaction might have been appropriate in the past when that happened, but most of the time isn't appropriate for the time being. So if you find out what that is, you can easily turn that around. And that has to do with, you know, your behavior, of course, but also your style of leadership, your style of communication. So it has an impact on every area, your relationships, right? It has an impact in, in all your areas. And I think well, that's one of the reasons I was so fascinated by uh, John McGuire, because, yeah. uh, you know, his, uh, I mean, muscle testing, uh, tapping into the subconscious is, is what right. he does. Yeah. Um, and I have some therapist friends that I'm not sure if you're familiar with Psyche, but basically you you use muscle testing and you tap into the subconscious and you locate where the issue, problem, um, the disconnect is. Yeah. And then you you balance for that disconnect. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. And there's and, different. And, and it's, it's extremely successful. Yeah, it is. I yeah. can can agree, and and you know you can balance it with different ways, right? Right. You can balance it with a program I do um, with the core transformation. You can balance it by tapping. You can balance it by trauma release, you know, and there are way more things how you can balance things. So it's just, I think, when you are helping people, whether that is coaching, mentoring, consulting, therapy, it's all in you being fully present with them, having this whole slew of like things you can do. And then tapping into that universal energy, the universal consciousness, however you want to call that. And then you get so much information about that person, about where they're coming from, that mm -hmm. it's easy to turn it around if they want to have a turnaround. So I guess that kind of falls in line with uh, the intuition or um, is that... I guess more or less just kind of being able to tap tap into the subconscious. And you, do you want to talk about the different ways that that could be done or what direction would you like to go down? Um, yeah, intuition is something that I learned when I was younger to mistrust. Mm. Right? Your intuition. I think most people do that. Yes. And it's funny because when my children were little, there was no end to their intuition right and they were spot on but somehow in school or whatever or we just too mind oriented you learned to to discard it because it's not logical right and through many of the courses like you mentioned the remote viewing Deepak Chopra the Akashic Records I found that your intuition is something that is not as tangible as you like it to be. And um, you can definitely, and, and in remote viewing, they have the physics that come into place too. And everything is, is waves, right? Wavelengths. And if you find a way of tapping into that, you know far more than just your logical mind can comprehend. And if we know there's been uh, research done that we live 95% of our day in our subconscious or other than conscious mind. So we're under the illusion that this big brain we have, the mind we have is directing everything in our life. And actually it's not. So for whatever I do, helping people to only direct the mind, I'm only directing 5%. So to go into that 95%, it needs more than, you know, fast knowledge of how to do things, but also to be present. I think being present is, is one of the biggest things you can do for your clients, for your groups, being present and just having more information from that, that energy field around everybody, the, the 
awareness, the consciousness, however you want to address that. So I, yeah, how do you how do you tune into those waves? How do you tune in the, the, the typical person? How would you suggest them to tune into um, uh, you know, the subconscious? Exactly. So of course you can ask questions, right? And the deeper you go with questions, the more information you get. And you can ask questions, for instance, like, you know, where do you feel things in your body whenever there's a problem? How does that look like? How does it feel like? You know, is it is it round, sharp, warm, cold? All the questions you can ask. So then you okay. connect already the body, right? You connect not the mind, but you go into the body and you can resolve things like that. But I think as a tool, it's more by being present. So being still up here, you have, you're open yourself up for information, any information that comes in from that client, from that group. Because okay. when I started doing what I do, I always was in my head, right? What are the right. steps I need to do? Okay, they're saying this. How can I help them with that? So I was not present with them. And when you're totally present with people, I don't know if you experienced that as well, you feel things. Things are coming up. Things that in the past- So would you feel that in, with your heart? I mean, is, it, is that considered like heart energy? You're saying kind of, kind of stay out of the head, get yes. out of the analytical mind. Yes. So where are we quote unquote thinking from or feeling from or experiencing from? Well- let me just counteract that, right? With, with the universal question, how do you know you love somebody? Okay. How do you know you want children? There's no logical answer really to those True. questions, right? It's a feeling, right? It's a feeling. So if we then get out of that mind and trying to rationalize everything, it's a feeling. And when you're present with a client, it goes to that extent that you can feel what they're feeling. Gotcha. Now, whenever I do that, because I know it's a foreign concept for most people, that intuition, that intuitively um, working with people, I always ask. It's never that I go, oh, I feel this, so it must be the truth. So I always ask, hey, you know what I'm feeling? What's coming up? This, this, and this. And I'm always spot on. But I still give the client um, the right to say, yes, that's true. No, that's not true. And it's it's... I think Tony does that exercise. I don't know if he still does that, but it was a prior to that on, on the third day where he had people in groups of three. Yes, and you mimic the person next to you and you breathe yeah. that way and you feel that way. And then oftentimes you can experience what it is that they're trying to Ex create and their, the other person's experience. Ex and yeah, that exercise was that kind of blew me away. Absolutely. Um, so how do you do that? You're yeah. just with that person mm -hmm. and you're, you're, you're modeling the same. If you look at each other, you're modeling how you move, how you sit, how you speak. If your hands are involved, you use the same words to really become one with that person. It sounds mm -hmm. kind of strange, but at right. that moment, you become one with that person. And that for me is like the, the direct line to that universal consciousness, your intuition, your allowance, you're allowing yourself to feel what they're feeling, to see sometimes what they're seeing. I most of the time feel, but there are no people that are seeing things as well. I hardly see things. Well, I mean, really I, I, I have a number of friends and, and coaches and, and therapists, people that can actually kind of delve into uh, with permission, of course, delve into other people's um, field and yeah. get answers um, yeah. about that other person. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I would assume that's kind of uh, going about it a very different way than just duplicating what the person next to you is doing. Or, or is that in a way the same, same thing? I mean, how, how, I mean, that's baffling to me. The, my, my, these acquaintances of mine, these friends of mine, they, they, realize things that are unbelievable, right? I mean, how do they know this stuff? How can they pick up on this stuff? Um, and I, I just, I don't understand how they do it, but they right. do. And it's, it's not just a small number of people. It's, no. I know it's a lot. Probably, right? Yeah. yeah. 
And it, it has to do practically with what we just discussed, but also allowing yourself to use that intuition. I mean, we mentioned short, we mentioned very briefly the Oneness University, right? Where yes. I was trained way, way, way back as a blessing giver. So I'm going yes. to come do it and just pass it on. So to open yourself up to it is the first step. You can call it spirituality. You can call it different things. But it's also allowing yourself to get that information, to know that there's more out there than our words, our behaviors, our actions. I mean, for people that believe in God, I believe in God, but not in, in religion. How you know that he's there or she or they? You don't really know. You trust, right? You know on a different level. But what is that? That must be something that is around us or energy or a yeah. very simple, simple example that Deepak Chopra is using. When you you're on the radio, wherever, station, right? And you hear a beautiful piece, piece of music. I love classical music. When you hear that, when that piece is over, that piece of music is done, where does it go? Is it still there? You just didn't tap into that. There's something with waves, telephone, uh, okay. computer, right? We all used to utilizing it, but there is something with energy waves that you can tap into now. Hmm. That makes sense. It does. It does. Um, and I wanted to say something about uh, the, the blessing. I guess Oneness University or the the blessing technique and. So I was at a Date with Destiny um, event, and I had just started getting into, you know, opening my eyes to energetics or metaphysics or, you know. Um, and so I went to this event, and of course, Tony tries to frame some of the unusual stuff in a way that is pal palatable to the everyday person. And, you know, basically, he had a bunch of people doing energy work on all of his participants and he yeah. framed it as it's, it's just a blessing. People are going to go around and, and bless you just, you know, it's, it's positive thought and they're going to go around and give you positive thoughts. And, um, and what was so amazing is after the event was over, that exercise was over. So, you know, you had a lot of the staff or um, helpers that were, that were attuned or knew this skill, this blessing skill. Um, they went over the, you know, a couple thousand um, different participants and, you know, a lot of these participants would experience, you know, a variety of um, uh, feelings or emotions or visions or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I was there as a crew member. And after that um, exercise, I asked five people, just no one I knew just went out there. I, I asked five people, what they thought of that, if they got anything out of that exercise, because I was fascinated by it back then. Um, and out of the five people I asked, one person didn't feel a thing. One person was very familiar with like energy work and could absolutely feel it. The three people, they were completely and totally blown away because they've never experienced anything like that in their life. They're like, I could feel this, or I could see this, or it brought overwhelming emotion to me. And, you know, no one's touching them. I mean, maybe someone's kind of passing over top. Pushing, putting your heads. Yeah. Just like right over top. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But generally there's no physical contact. Um, yeah. And those three people absolutely blown away. And I, and I just found that now, so fascinating. It, yeah, it's very fascinating. And and there has been, um, I haven't looked at it recently, but there has been research, real research, right? Is it is it woo-woo? Is it practical? What is it really, really research being done on it? And what they found is that the, the how do you call that? Your, your lobes on the side, how do they call uh -huh. that? They are affected by it. So I, okay. mean, I, I give the, the blessing and usually I put my hands very lightly on their head. Okay, okay. gotcha. I feel ripples. I feel waves. 
I see. Okay. So from that person in, in, in my hands. So there is something, there is an exchange of energy happening that right. the effect on the, on, on the side lobes, for lack of a better word, it has its effect on um, letting go of stuff, on emotions that you haven't felt before, mm -hmm. or working through stuff. So you're in a trance in a way, right? You're not okay. really there. I mean, there meaning you're not opening your eyes and, and taking in everything that's moving and everything that you're hearing. But it's like you're very still with yourself. So you open up to that energy field. The, okay. the the global the universal consciousness right and you allow yourself with good intent to experience whatever you want to experience there's more out there than meets the eye and that is a fascinating subject and nowadays they do a lot of research for the real effect of that and that is just wonderful for the non-believer so to speak to say well yeah there's more to it it really does have its effect and we're not um, hypnotized but then again when you're hypnotized you're in a trans as well right and when you're in a trance the chances of things changes the chances uh, the chances of uh, things being affected are more so than when you block yourself off by just being in your logical mind gotcha so it's it's a fascinating subject and and when you say that a lot of friends a lot of your friends are feeling right and they're doing fantastic stuff you mentioned the akashic records Yes. And the Akashic Records is like, you know, your history, it's being written. Yeah. T tell me, a, yeah, tell me a little bit more yeah. about Akashic Records because yeah. I, I really don't have an understanding of that yeah. at all. And I hear some of my uh, friends, you know, they, they just throw the word around like it's an everyday word. And I'm like, what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. <laughs> so. What is that? It's under the notion that your history is being written, right? Okay. It's being recorded. Not necessarily written, but uh, written, but being recorded. If okay. you believe in past lives, the past lives are all there too. So, and then you can take a look at it. It's like your board of directors that are uh, consist of guardians because you cannot tap into those records without permission. They are probably members of your family that passed on. They are probably your spiritual guides or mentors or teachers and if you as, as again i'm the conduit right i ask permission i have a certain prayer and then people can ask me questions and then the answers are coming through me often i don't even know what i'm saying or, or i know what i'm saying but i don't remember it afterwards what right because right. you're kind of in a trance it's throwing coming, it's not coming from you it's it's no, coming, it's coming through, through you absolutely yeah and people, and I've been doing, I've been doing hundreds and hundreds of them, and people get answers from themselves, from their own records, from their own experiences, from their family members, and they get answers that they cannot consciously access. And it's just fascinating. I think this is our topic, right? So if, if I wanted to do that, if I wanted to tap, tap into my uh, uh, Akashic records, what do I do? What are the steps? Well, it, how, how do I do it? <laughs> it's hard to it to do it by yourself, you know. Okay, you yeah. can do it, but it, it's it's easier to do it with somebody else. Well, what I normally do, I ask your legal name okay. because I need to address you by your legal name. I ask permission if I can. Then I have an opening prayer or an opening ceremony. And uh, where I ask if, if this is possible, if this is okay, what comes through me is only for the good of you. And you get only to know however you can handle. So it's not like, how do they say that? A garden and, and, and a, a hose of information, right? A fire hose of information. It's just what you need at that moment. And then when we so, do that, we kind of have a conversation where you ask me questions and I just channel whatever answers are coming to me. Sometimes I see something, but and I, I hear, but it's more the feel. Gotcha. And whatever comes through. And sometimes it's, I don't know why I say things I say, but it connects to the person I'm reading for. 
And then at the end, we close it so it doesn't stay open. We close it again and we can record it or most people take notes. And there's a lot of information they're getting that they possibly couldn't get any other way. Gotcha. And I guess that would be helpful if they're having a hard time and they need to find some answers and figure out why they do what they do. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. So if I look at the people I've helped with that, there's sometimes an illness, there's sometimes an illness in the family, there's sometimes a fear, there is like an, a feel of uneasiness, why am I here, right? A big question, why am I here on earth, right? right. So uh, it, it can be any question. Well, wow, that's pretty fascinating. It is. I love it. And the feedback I'm, I'm getting, because you don't know what you do unless you get feedback from people, is that it's of value to them and um, they got a lot out of it. Right. So. so this is kind of a learning channel about health and wellness. And, um, and I guess in the sense, tapping into your Akashic records is a very good uh, therapeutic tool or can be a, a, ter a tool of understanding yeah. Right? And in that sense, it can help whoever it's being done for. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we're talking about, right? It's not about, we did with Tony Robbins when I was facilitating life mastery. It's about physical health. We did a little bit about emotional health, but this mm -hmm. is the, the tools we were just discussing is about emotional and mental health. And I'm very happy that people pay attention to it nowadays. When I yes. was growing up, there was mild interest in, in physical health, but emotional and mental health, unless you were admitted to a hospital, people didn't really think about it, right? right. How to raise your children emotionally and mentally healthy. And nowadays, um, there's so much stress around the world. You know, not only in this pandemic year, in this pandemic year, it, it, it's kind of crazy. But be, even before that, we work so hard. We have so much to do. We get so much sensory input. We uh, travel, you know, and that all puts physical stress on you, which impact your emotional wellness. So all those things, I think everybody needs somebody in their life with tools like this, who can help them, who can help them make sense of things, who can help mm -hmm. them just relieve of, um, of the stressors in their life. I feel like these days, um, in terms of health and wellness, it's not just how you take care of your body. There's actually a number of pillars that are just as important, maybe more important. You've got emotional wellness, which you know leads to physical ailments, if you don't have good emotional health, um, spiritual, mind, body, spirit, you know, those are all columns that all help with, um, you know, well-being um, and becoming more and more recognized as, you know, maybe just as it being just as important as eating your vegetables. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Or juicing them when you don't want yeah. to eat them. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And it is. And, you know, um, I told you about the remote viewing, right? So it, it, it's like in your mind with a, a certain formula as well, you travel to time and space. So at first, when I was doing that, I thought it's the biggest scam in the world. You know, when you go for your first target, your first exercise and, and the teachers and, and everybody's leaving the room, I was going, oh, they're, they're laughing there. They're behind off behind the door. Right. And um, but I got into it and I just relaxed and I channeled some things. And it was a mixed journey of like bringing back great data or getting stuck in the data. Oh. But I organized um, a course, I still lived in Europe by then, um, for my friends and family. And my 11-year-old son wanted to do it as well. Really? So when okay. he did his first session and he came out of it and he said, Mom, I do this all the time. Really? Yeah. And I wow. think that as a child, you have that ability you know, to go somewhere else to detect things that are, are more than just what you can see or hear. 
And it's, it's fascinating that we can go back to that childlike trust, faith, knowing that there's energies, knowing that, you know, it's coming from, from our universal consciousness or all the energies around you and just take that in. And like we said in the beginning, and then you learn, well, what you can't see is not true or what you cannot experience is not true, right? right? So there is, is so much more out there. And it's fascinating for me to utilize, this, utilize that as, as a healing as well. Because I do believe that if you live for a while, I've been living for a while, right? With all the good, the bad, and the ugly, and you never pay attention to um, either the good, right? That, that's as detrimental as like not paying attention to the bad and the ugly. There's kind of wounds. There's kind of people shying away from things. There's kind of people that are afraid or, mm-hmm. you know, and you can heal of that and feel way more, how would I say that? Grounded, present. Alive. Fulfilled, alive. Yeah. Yeah. And there is so, there are so many people that just, how would you say that? Are they're of course not aware of it. And, you know, I firmly believe that everybody has to do their own journey in their own way. So I'm, I'm not saying the one is the better than the other, but there's a certain amount of people that are living in a small world and that might be the best for them at that moment but if you're not happy with living in your small world there's so much to explore on the outside and i think that tony robbins is is using the the word comfort zone he's not the only one so right. when you're in a comfort zone where everything is certain where everything is is just as you know it that becomes wonderful when you first reach that comfort zone and then it becomes like a habit but for most people then you get like irritated with it at yeah. one point stale right. and no growth yes yes and growth is something that we need we all know that and growth is to look outside of the box right and to look at you know what was great in your life what's not so great in your life what's missing and you know what experiences you have that impact your life at this moment emotionally physically you name it and to see how you can resolve that and that is you know what excites me what gets me out of bed every day to see what i, I can do my small part in like making people more aware alive and even happy and fulfilled. Well, 10 years ago, so well, uh, Tony Robbins definitely, you know, kind of put me on a path of um, opening my eyes a bit. Uh, But 10 years ago, I was working behind the scenes or, you know, I was a a crew member kind of helping out. And for whatever reason, I had crewed a couple of times at uh, uh, UPW, but at that that particular weekend people were doing muscle testing and people nice. were doing Reiki and actually my knee, I blew out my knee and um, uh, three women came over and I didn't know what they were doing, but they were making my feel, my knee feel better by kind of pressing their hands around it. And right. how do they do that? Right. And, but yeah. there was like visuals happening. There was different feelings going on. It was, I, I mean, I re- actually referred to them as the three witches of Eastwick. And I was like, you know, they're, you're good witches, but you got to be witches because I'm feeling something I shouldn't be feeling, right? Because I that was yeah. not part of my belief system. Yeah. Um, and then he actually had some speakers come in and their speakers were centered around, um, you know, the energetic arts, I guess you could say. Um, and they weren't speakers at that time that you would see presenting to the general participants. This is just for the, the crew members, I guess he was a little bit more aggressive in that realm with the crew members. Um, And I guess how we reconnected is through Tiffany. Yes. Um, So I went up to Tiffany and she was doing, you know, I started opening my eyes. This was probably like on Sunday and Tiffany was doing energy work or or something weird to this person over (laughs) here, right? Helping this person out. And I went over to her. I said, you know, I, uh, I see you doing energy work or something and, you know, I'm in the middle of a divorce and can you help me out? And she looked at me, she says, she says, I'll give you 30 seconds of my time. 
And I was like, thank you. That's great. It's so nice of you. <laughs> Yeah. But what's, what I didn't realize is that's, that's all I needed. I remember this very clearly. She, um, she was in a doorway and she turned around and looked at me and, and I still don't know really what this was. Um, obviously she was intending something, but um, she looked in my eyes and I mean, literally, I mean, what I was seeing, her face was distorting. Um, I started getting lightheaded and I fainted and, and I don't faint. I mean, that's just, I don't have a history of fainting, but I was standing up looking at this attractive lady, looking in her eyes, our eyes locked, things started getting weird and I fainted. And uh, fortunately there was a chair next to me. So I, I grabbed, grabbed onto the chair, pushed myself back up. And when I got up, it, it felt like this whole weight had just lifted from my shoulders. Beautiful. And, and that went on for, uh, a couple months. I mean, I felt completely relieved for months. And of course, you know, leaving that event, I had a very different perspective. I was truly introduced to, um, at least consciously, to uh, energetics or metaphysics or whatever you want to call it for the first time. And it did make me want to share it with other people because yeah. And I think I relate to, you know, other, I can relate to a lot of other people out there also, because a lot of people don't believe in this stuff. And I certainly didn't believe in this stuff. In fact, I used to kind of poke fun at anybody who'd even mention it. But you made a, a very accurate statement at the beginning, right? That you're, you're now explaining even more. It wasn't part of my belief system. It was not. So who says that what you believe is the, the truth for everybody. It's your truth at this moment, at that moment, right. but right. it might not be my truth. True. Right? Yes. So it's instead of getting locked in into a belief system that kind of works for you, but also keeps you in place mm -hmm. to open yourself up. And that is with Tony giving you different experiences, it, it, it's rocking your solid belief system into maybe there is more than it. Tiffany looking yeah. in your eyes, it doesn't make sense, but it has a big impact. So that is opening yourself up and coming from being closed minded in a way through your yes. beliefs to being open minded and to explore. Exactly. And I'm not saying that what Tiffany does is for everybody. I'm not saying that Akashic records are the answer for everybody. I'm not saying that a lot of the tools are for everybody. But there is something more out there and that something is resonating with a certain person. You just have to find it. There is Reiki. There is emotional trauma release. There is there's so much out there. But there is, yeah an experience. So when you have that open mind, when you let go of fixed beliefs, you're in for a surprise. You fainted, right? I that did. was a surprise. <laughs> I know. You know, the, the so weight weird. was lifted. Absolutely. So I came to believe again that there's so much more out there. And I will, within reason for myself, you know, you be all over boundaries, I will explore what works for me and what doesn't work for me. And it's just, people call it spirituality. They have different names for it. But it's just wonderful that there's tools and ways out there for healing, because it's all about healing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes healing without you even know that you do. How sure. comfortable is that? You don't have to do anything. You just healed, right? That in that specific moment. And that for me is fascinating to get people out of their fixed, closed system, beliefs, thoughts, things they do over and over again to open up to a new form of being more happy, present, aware, alive, fulfilled. And that is, um, it really, for me, there's so much to explore. And the end goal is to make sure that, um, you know, either my client has released what they needed to release or they're opening up for new ways of being and doing and just feel lighter. And that is a fascinating path. So if you really want to know what I do, I cannot explain sometimes what I do.
but it's a mixture of everything I've learned and always from awareness on how to help my client or the groups of client in front of me. And it, it's kind of a directed flow towards that person. And I have lots to pick from, lots to choose from. And sometimes when you work with a client who comes from that fixed belief system, right? And, and it is a little bit in their comfort zone and closed minded. It takes a little bit, you know, to wean them off that closed system to make sure they open up for, for other things, to make sure you guide them along step by step. But it's, it's just fascinating what is possible for us to heal. And whatever you choose, everything is a great start. What I really enjoy are some of the, um, you know, I, I have a number of friends that are you know, Reiki practitioners or energetic yeah. practitioners. And I think the stories that I enjoy the most are the ones that um, people have been urged by a family member to go see them <laughs> or their arms been twisted and, and they yeah. don't believe they don't believe in any of this nonsense. Right? right. But they're there because they promised someone they need to be there. Yeah. And then they go there and the results they experience and the sensations they feel are often so pro profound that, you know, they can't deny it. So they go in. And so it's not like, you know, I, I get it that, there's plenty of people out there that believe they're going to feel something. So of course they go to that practitioner and they feel something and that's great. But it, what impresses me, if someone is completely closed down to that idea and they go to a particular practitioner and they experience something that they, in their own mind, they have no business experiencing, or they just have no belief that that experience could have happened. Um, but um you know, I'd love, I love hearing that. It's just like the, the stuff's real, right? It's, it is it's real. extremely effective. What, whether you believe it or not, it can yeah. help you out. There's so many different things. We don't even know we're doing it. And, but it determines our quality of life and our quality of experiences. And even the knowledge of how you filter what's happening around you, how you interpret what's happening around you is just very powerful to know. And also to know that you can change it, that there is a choice. Because most of us, us are living in patterns and filters that are from the past, most of the time not being instilled by yourself, but being instilled by parents, peer group, teachers right and you just live according that like you have no choice so right. when you offer choices then your subconscious is always choosing what's good for you like mm -hmm. you thought with what the experience you described that you didn't have choice then to have that weight you know when you were going through a divorce but when tiffany showed you you can also do that without feeling that way that was a great choice. And sometimes we don't know. We don't know what we don't know. And we are conduit in helping you know what you don't know. And then together make a choice whether you want to change that or not or keep it. So start exploring and listen to your gut feeling. Because for some people, intuition is not uh, the right word. Gut feeling is the right word or listen to your heart. There is like um, a lot of wisdom in your heart that we don't access. There's a wonderful method called heart math where yes. they really, you know that, where they really can tap into that, but sometimes be still and breathe into your heart and ask your heart certain questions. You get beautiful answers as well. So utilize the resources you already have and go on an, an exploring journey to find out what else can help you. Because we're humans, we're sensitive, we're fallible. You know, stuff happens. Life is not always fantastic. Many moments are, but the heavy go up and we go down. And there's so much out there to help you and make it more easy for you. So go explore.